Um, and so, you know, it, it stands to reason that because I can't stress enough how crucial it was that the FBI had access to all of Rudy Giuliani's communications over that period. So they knew exactly who he was talking to. They knew as the minute pretty much he did that John Paul Mac Isaac was, was uh, spilling the beans and they knew, they thought they had John Paul Mac Isaac locked down. They had been menacing to him. They had threatened him when they came to pick up the laptop. They had been extraordinarily rude to his father. Um, and uh, they'd taken the laptop. They'd taken a copy of uh, a hard drive that he'd made a clone of the laptop. Um, and they basically told him to keep his mouth shut. And then uh, he didn't. Uh, you know, they, they he gave it to the FBI in December 2019. And then here he is in August of 2020 contacting Rudy Giuliani. So they knew then that they had a problem and they had to shut down. I believe that is why they then preemptively went to social media and other media organizations to warn them with enough detail of what our story would be, or, or they didn't even know it would be the New York Post at that stage, uh, to give them enough warning so that they would recognize immediately when this story came up and shut it down. And really, you can't blame the social media companies. If the FBI comes to you and, and basically instructs you that this is going to be Russian disinformation that could damage the election and throw the election, then you kind of have no choice but to shut it down. Um, and so this is the FBI acting in a malign way, in a deliberate way. And um, then, of course, uh, when Rudy Giuliani was talking to me uh, at the New York Post about uh, getting the story out, they knew exactly when the story was going to come out, which would also explain why Facebook was, uh, again, immediately on guard. So uh, I, I don't think any of this is a coincidence. I think it's a strategy and it worked very well for them. And we know that uh, because the story was suppressed, 